let's turn to our friend uh, whose Twitter uh, um, whose Twitter breakdowns are just phenomenal. The Baldy breakdowns just need to be seen. Brian Baldinger back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How you been, Baldy? Rich, uh, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I hope that you and the wife and the kids are all you know good and protected and all that kind of stuff. Um, We're hanging I'll in there. Say Thank this, you, Rich. Uh, in this COVID world that we all have to uh, sort of uh, guard ourselves against. Um, living in a film room is a naturally safe, distant place. <laughs> nice. uh, people don't come in there, Rich. It, it's me and uh, 32 NFL teams and a bunch of players, and I just kind of live in my little fantasy. I feel fortunate I can do all of that. So, uh, and, and, and Brian, as I, I mentioned earlier, I mean, just your, your manner of speaking and your folksy way of breaking it down in an entertaining but also informative way really makes it particularly special, and I, I can't call enough attention to it. And Richard Sherman has tweeted about it. You've seen other players tweeting about it. Who, who, is, who is the tape hero? Who has been the, the guy you put the tape on? And you know it's going to be phenomenal, but uh, consistently uh, better than you even knew it would be. Who's been that guy all year long for 2020 for you, Brian? Well, I mean, Rich, as a long-suffering Jet fan that you are, <laughs> yes, uh, you cannot turn – a jet tape on and not look at highway 77 over there at left tackle. Look at you. And Mackay Beckton. Um, he literally, I mean, I joke around it. You, you call it folks. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I try to have fun, but I can't imagine Mackay Beckton putting up holiday ornaments or decorations. <laughs> I mean, if he touched one of my Christmas bulbs that are on my tree right now, he would smash. I mean, everything he hits gets smashed. I have to watch McBride Beckton. Rich. No I mean, kidding. So, the Jets, obviously, no. Are you are you not just trying to tailor it to an audience here, Brian? I mean, like that's really the guy that that's been so consistently dominant on tape this year has been the left tackle of an zero and thirteen team, but he's that good. Well, I mean, you know, it's easy to go to Aaron Rodgers and go, "How does he get this ball to Devontae Adams sure. without ever looking at him?" And it's it's just it's an audible. It's just check, but there's no communication. He doesn't even look at him. And the ball comes out in the first play last week. And he hits Devontae Adams for five yards. Or Patrick Mahomes, uh, there's just no answer to anything that he does. Uh, everybody has tried. I mean, Brian Flores has tried his best. He intercepted three passes last week. And you could put a blindfold on Patrick Mahomes. He's going to find Travis Kelsey in the middle of the field. I, I mean, you, the, the, the beautiful thing about our league and the NFL, Rich, is there is never enough great athleticism or skill it, it never runs out ever and so you could go around and, and I, I pointed out the Jets because they're the worst team in the league record right. wise but there was a player on that team that you would want to watch and you would pay to watch Brian Baldinger here on the Rich Eisen show last night Justin Herbert was exactly that what are you seeing out of this kid that that um, that adds to the or backs up the superlatives that people keep throwing out that the Chargers have a keeper here in Justin Herbert? Well, you, you remember Robert Redford in the natural. He was Roy Hobbs. To me, Justin Herbert is Roy Hobbs. Like nobody could have predicted coming out of Oregon and what they called a system offense that he could make everything look so easy and natural including the 53-yard strike in overtime to Jalen Guyton to, uh, you know, set up the, you know, the quarterback sneak to win the game. I mean, he, I was there at SoFi Stadium, Rich, in week two yep. when Therod Taylor, bless his heart, goes into the locker room before the kickoff, and nobody knows what's going on. And the next thing you know, he's thrown in there against the Kansas City Chiefs, and he takes the ball right down the field and scores against the Chiefs. And he knew five minutes before the kick that he was going to start. He's been the natural all year long. And everything from his ability to just throw a football like it's the easiest thing in the world to getting out of harm's way, to putting the ball in the right location, uh, you know, to us eluding the rush against some of the great athletes that chase him. I mean, he's been like that all season. So um, your defensive rookie of the year would be who then? If this is is he your offensive rookie of the year, or Justin Jefferson does actually give him a uh, a, I mean, a run for Jefferson his money, and then and is, then and then we can transition Justin to the Jefferson's defense. Route run. He is, is, but he's doing it in a twenty one year old body. Uh, he has two plans, Rich. We get a play, uh, a plan to open, and then a plan after the catch to. I mean, nobody's in, in that rookie class of 35 receivers that were drafted plays the game like Justin Jefferson. Um, 
he's probably already the best offensive player on that team. Uh, and it's a bright future. But I would say defensively right now, I, mean, I think the Washington football team are playing lights out defense. And you could put Chase Young in a tuxedo, and he would look James Bond smooth. And then he would – he but but as smooth as he is, he's just a pilot. I mean, oh, we just missed it. Looks so easy. There's just his movement is just rare. That's all. Brian Baldinger here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Who, who's the who, who do you think is uh, the the best team in the NFC? You know, you've got Drew Brees coming back for the Saints against the Chiefs, so that's going to happen. Uh, you've got Rodgers. You just mentioned how terrific um, he has looked on film, and we've seen it in real life motion as well. You've got the Rams that have that grown ass man 99 right in the middle of a defense that has number 20 on the back end. You've got the Seahawks looking the way that they look um, in the last month. You've got also the Bucks at some point we assume are gonna have a run in them. Um, who do you think is the best team in the NFC? And you can even throw the Washington football team in this mix the way that they've been playing the last Washington month. football team might be the best defense in the NFL before the season's out. Um, they, they just physically just annihilate teams. But uh, I, I, it'd be hard to go against Green Bay right now because I think what Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers have now figured out, if they have a plan for whatever you do at them, I, it doesn't matter what your defense is or who's the stars on the other side, there's a plan. And I don't know that anybody can execute the plan better than Aaron Rodgers right now. So, I mean, they're going to put a lot of points. We know defensively, Rich, that, you know, teams can, you know, they can run the ball down their throats at times the way the 49ers did last year, the way the, the Bucks did this year. Um, so there's, there's a weakness there that probably won't go away. But they, have, they can put a 35 or 40 spot up on just about anybody right now, the way Aaron Rodgers is playing. The ball doesn't pound, for crying out loud. It doesn't matter where he throws it. They're, they're in sync, Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers, and mm. they're going to be tough to beat. And so then the AFC team that has the best opportunity to prevent the what we're assuming is the inevitable of the Chiefs returning to the Super Bowl, which which team is that for you, uh, Brian? What do you got for me there? Well, I think that – I think teams that can really run the ball well, like Cleveland, could be a tough matchup for Kansas City because if you can – you know, look, the, the old – uh, you know, if you can play keep away from Patrick Mahomes and not allow them to have the ball very often or limit the possessions to six or seven in a game, and if you could take one away and force a field goal, or whatever, I mean, you might be able to keep the score down. I mean, Cleveland, the way they can run it, could be a problem for them. Uh, Buffalo is capable of getting in a shootout with just about anybody, the way that quarterback is playing, the way Stephon Diggs is playing, where they could put up a lot of points. And defensively, they do a lot. They're very creative what they do defensively. They're very good at certain positions. So I would think Buffalo and Cleveland could be two possible roadblocks to the Chiefs returning uh, to the Super Bowl. And then I guess to, to wrap it up, you want to talk, because you mentioned an AFC East player that's fun to watch. How much fun is Josh Allen? How much fun is oh. it watching him, Brian? Well, part of the fun is, I mean, honestly, nothing ruffles him at all, ever. Right. And nobody, and part of the fun is nobody could have predicted this coming out of Wyoming. Nobody. That he could be a 70% completion quarterback. Amazing. That all the, the crazy, wacky plays that he tried to make as a rookie would just disappear. Um, you know, and when he gets into a rhythm, like he did a couple of Monday nights ago, I mean, there's nothing that can really stop him um, except just throwing the ball away to avoid a rush. But he is, he's, and his arm is a cannon. I mean, 80 yards is not out of the question for him to put the ball in the air. I've seen it. So he is he is exactly what every team is looking for to find the franchise quarterback and then build around him the way Brand, uh, Brandon Bean and you know Sean McDermott have done and do it the right way. I mean they're they're the poster child for how to build a franchise right now. And then you know uh, a f phenomenal Week 15 game. Um, it's the Lincoln Riley Bowl. Uh, with Kyler Murray hosting the quarterback that succeeded him in Oklahoma. It's Jalen Hurts' first road start. What did you see on film about 
how Jalen has maybe corrected some flaws, covered flaws in this offense that unfortunately Wentz was only accentuating. What did you see out of Hurts that makes you think this could be something possible for the Eagles to keep repeating? Well, he has uncanny poise, Rich. Uh, the touchdown throw to Alshon Jeffrey, I mean, he got hit right in the kisser by Quan Alexander. They flagged him for it. The ball went exactly where he wanted it to go. So he made a big-time throw to get up, get him up 7 nothing. They spied him all game long with a variety of players. It didn't do any good. He just He's one of those guys that I don't know how fast he is, but he's, he's as fast as he needs to be. Nice. Um, and so just the way Kyler is. So that's that. And then, you know, he's a great runner. He was coming out of Channel View High School outside of Houston, and he was at at Alabama for his first two seasons there. And when he had to at Oklahoma, he was. He's a good runner. He has a good feel for where the lanes are. Um, you know, he knows how to protect himself. Any kid out of Texas knows how to slide. I mean, you learn how to slide when you're four in Texas. He knows how to slide, protect himself. And, and then, you know, he, it wasn't a very complicated game plan, but he executed. And so he put the ball where Miles Sanders and Dale Rager could do something with it after the catch. And for the first time all year, you know, uh, and Philadelphia Eagle quarterback wasn't sacked in a game. And that's a testament to him getting the ball out of his hands and not holding it and not, you know, coming unglued as soon as somebody showed up in his face. And he was really good at it. And you're great at breaking it down, man. Uh, Brian, I, I really do enjoy uh, watching what you do. And it's bite-sized, two and a half minutes, minute and a half year, minute 45. Congrats on getting the uh, – you know, more uh, every year attention on that. And let's do this more often. Brian, happy new year to you and yours. Uh, I appreciate that, Rich. Thanks very much for having me. And uh, yeah, happy Brian. holidays to you and Thanks, to all of yours as well, Rich. Appreciate you. You take care of yourself, Brian Balding. At Baldy NFL, please follow him. It's it's really dynamite. You will not, uh, you will not rue it. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.